Hello everyone, Professor Toybox here, along with Rapunzel, and we're in a brand new toy box today, and I'm doing a build for Cobra N13 on Reddit, who has a daughter who wants to race horses and ride through the countryside in a little farm type setting. So that's what I'm going to build today. And uh, I've already taken the liberty here of changing the sky and turning off the music. And um, because this user is kind of new to the toy box, I want to go a little bit slow. But uh, essentially to turn the music off and change the sky, you're going to drop this sky changer, which I've already done. And I moved mine below the terrain after I finished. But basically you'll come in here to spark mode. I can get over to it. There we go. And you go under the properties and just set the sky. And I chose Mickey's bright blue sky because that fits the farm setting that I'm going to use today. And then likewise in the gameplay toys drawer, you can drop down this uh, boom box and you can set the properties for that. I t changed it to override all other music and I set it to silence. And that way you guys can hear me while I'm building today. Now we'll go ahead and set the default texture here for this. And uh, we're looking for Mickey's farm. There we go, fantastic farmstead. I'm going to set that to be my theme so that all the terrain that I drop will have this theme. And we'll go ahead and cancel and come out of spark mode. All right, so I'm just going to start by building out some terrain here and putting some things down. I've already got a fairly large block here. And I think I might put down another one just like this, just to make sure I have enough room to build here. And make sure they're lined up. And I was also thinking that it would be nice to have a little river kind of meandering through here. So I'm going to scroll down to the river textures, to the river terrain pieces. La -da 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 -da. Here we go. And we'll put a little river along here. extend this a little bit because I have some plans for this area back here. And a straight river is kind of boring. So we'll go ahead and put down a couple of other pieces here and just kind of make this wander off a little bit. We'll put some woods around this when we're done. And I thought maybe having this end in kind of a little lake type area would be kind of fun. Okay. And I thought it would be kind of nice to have a waterfall over here. <clears throat> be nice and pretty and scenic. And I'll put that one in for starters and we'll see how that goes. Okay. And now I'm going to come back into spark mode because it takes a while to scroll all the way down to the other end of that terrain drawer. So I'm going to hit the B here to move this block. Well, I'm not actually going to move it. And then hit A to place it. And then you'll note that I'm right back here in this part of the drawer. So that's a nice fast way to get in there. So countryside, an interesting one, would have hills. So we're going to head, go ahead and put down some, some hills here. And I'm thinking maybe this might be kind of nice. And lining these things up can always be a little bit of a challenge. And we're going to go ahead and drop down a few of these. There we go. Okay, so now we got some hillside kind of going there a little bit. And maybe we'll do the same over on this end. 
just kind of frame out a little bit of a valley here. And I'm not going to build a very large area, but just give myself some room here to kind of work. There we go. And then I'll fill in some of these gaps. And to make sure I pick the same size piece here. I needed to necessarily use a piece that big. Okay. And I think this piece will fit nicely right up on top here. So now we got kind of a little bit of a valley here that we can ride through. thinking it might be kind of nice rather to put in something around this pond a little bit so we can frame it with some trees or something. There we go. That'll give you some places to ride through. So now we have kind of a nice little area here that we can explore. And we need a little something up top here. We'll go ahead and fill this in. Kind of make a square area here. Okay, so we got a little valley with some visual interest. We got a river coming off of this little waterfall over here and heading over to that little lake. And I may drop some more blocks over here before I'm done, but uh, you can kind of expand from here however you want. Um, of course, you can try to copy what I've done, but it's more fun just to kind of mix it up and make it your own. All right, so now for kind of a little farm thing here, let's go ahead and come up to uh, Building sets group four. This is where the bulk of the farming textures are. And so we're going to start with this little barn. And it doesn't really matter quite where I drop this. We'll go ahead and put that over here along with the silo. And now we've got some little farm plots here. Uh, if you've been through the um, farming tutorial in the Toy Box Hub, and completed it, you get awarded this farming plot, which uh, allows you to um, pot your own plants. This will take a huge jump in memory, so I'm probably going to wait to put this down a little bit. I'm thinking I'm going to use this toy box myself for a farming toy box later on. And then here's an overgrown one. And then you've got a super grow plot where you can put things in. So there's several farm plots that you get. We also have some dirt paths that we can put down. And these kind of work. You got a little bit of a T here for the path. So we can build some paths in our farm. Have this dead end over here. Then we can run the paths to kind of connect to the different places on the farm where we might want to go. Which I'll just put down that mount for now because I'm not exactly sure how this is going to go just yet. And we also have these stone retaining walls. 
It can be useful for things. So um, you can use these to separate your grass uh, from your farm plots and different things. Now we head over this way, we have a stone path, and this is part of the pirate set. Um, you could certainly use those if you like, but I'm going to use just the farming pieces for the most part. If you come down to, uh, I think it's building group two under the city pieces, there's some additional things here that can be useful. If we scroll on down past all of these billboards and uh, different city things, We've got rubble and different things. I believe there's some fence pieces here somewhere that would be kind of useful. And it might not be this drawer. <laughs> uh, yep, it's not that drawer. I wonder if it's part of this drawer. This is the Disneyland pieces primarily. Yeah, that's not that one either. Disneyland and Halloween Town are in that drawer. Okay, what about decorations? This might have been the one I was thinking of. So you can see there's all kinds of stuff you can put down. I'm trying to stick to the farm terrain, but of course there's no reason you have to. You can put down all kinds of crazy stuff. There we go, that's what I was looking for. Nice little picket fence. I'm going to put down a little horse enclosure here. Got to have a place for your horses to be, right? There we go, and I'm going to go ahead and remove one of these so we have a way in and out of there with our horses. And so now we come over here to the mounts drawer. We can go ahead and put a horse in here if we wanted. And this is where our horse will be waiting for us when we come into the toy box. All right, now there's some additional farming terrain pieces that are here under the plants drawer, which you wouldn't expect to find them there. But there's these fantasy terrain, one, two, three, and all of these. So we'll go ahead and just put these down to see what we have to work with for the farming setting. And you can customize these to a whole bunch of different things. So if we come into here and go into spark mode and theme these, I believe, let's see. You can see there's a different theme for every, it goes along with every um, terrain texture. Here's the one for Mickey's. So we'll go ahead and set that to be our theme for that piece. And we'll do the same for all of these. And then we can see what we have to work with. Looks like a little apple tree there. Little train strip there. Kind of a broken fence there. And a tree. And 
and another tree. And a windmill. That's exciting. Something you'd expect to see on a farm. And a little farming plot. And looks like some plants. So we have some additional things that we can move around and use in our toy box. We can set these up all over the place and just kind of make this kind of a fun little area to run around in. So I'm going to put that one down there. And I think I'm going to come over here and just kind of drop this one over this way. And I think I'll go ahead and put in those plots now just to kind of see how much memory this does take up on my Wii U. Yeah, that's quite a bit. I don't think I'll be able to put a lot of these down, but it'll be enough to establish the farm setting. You can get your uh, sidekicks to come in here and plant and put them to work. If you've been through the farming tutorial, then you know that's kind of a nice thing to do. There we go, and we'll go ahead and move this over here just to kind of add a barrier to the edge of this. There we go. So now we've got kind of a farm taking shape. And with these trees, we can kind of begin to build a little bit of a woods around this. There might be some trees around this river. And if you start dropping these in the same, facing the same way, it can get kind of redundant. And uh, one thing you can do though to kind of hide that a little bit is rotate these every so often. And uh, depending on where you're standing, it'll look like you've got some different uh, different trees. They won't look quite like the same tree all the time. So you know, as you look at those you wouldn't necessarily tell that that's the exact same tree that you're seeing all over and over again. So that can be a very useful thing. There we go. Now we got some trees there. I'll probably put some on the other side of the river when I'm done. We can put some up here on top of the hill as well. And you want to kind of stagger these a little bit. Trees don't normally grow naturally in a row. So if we kind of just spread these around. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with coming into the plants drawer and taking some of the other trees and sprinkling them in here. They might look a little funny compared to these little more cartoony style trees. But there's nothing wrong with that. It's your toy box. You can make it look however you want. It would be interesting to leave a little bit of a gap there. Okay, so now we got some kind of some woods up on top of there. Can't quite drop those. The edge of that terrain makes that a little bit tricky to do. There we go. So now we got kind of a nice little area starting to shape up here. Let's go ahead and see if we can put in a little apple orchard. <clears throat> so maybe that might be over here. 
Uh, we'll put it over this way. And I'm going to move this out of the way. a little interesting. Don't necessarily have to put them down like this, but I thought that might be uh, visually interesting. Could just put them down in a row or mix them up a little bit. There we go. And these are the kinds of trees you'd expect to be seen planted next to a developed property, like maybe next to the house or something like that if you've got a farmhouse. These aren't typically the kinds of trees you'd see growing in nature. Let's see, we'll put this little plot over here. Throw that there. Okay, so now we got kind of a little farmland that's coming together here. I like it. That's pretty cool. And you got some trees you can ride through and some hills to explore. And we'll go ahead and maybe put a few more trees up this way. Oh, we got this little water thing here. Go ahead and move this. Uh, let's see. Where would we want to put this on the farm? Eh, maybe over here by the... Eh, we'll stick it right there for right now. Alright. Well, I'm going to go ahead and drop in some more trees and just kind of frame this out a little bit and then uh, I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, everybody, I've got uh, trees now scattered throughout this toy box, as you can see. And I've also added another level of terrain up here to go along with uh, this little second waterfall that I stuck up here. This is just one massive terrain piece that I added. And uh, that adds kind of some visual interest and a nice boundary up here. So you can kind of ride along up through here and walk through or jump over this little river. And then down the other side, I added an extra row of blocks here with some trees on the other side of this river. So all kinds of places to explore here. And I'm going to go ahead and move this orchard now. And because uh, I want to put a little road in here. And so I'm just going to go ahead and move this over about like so. And we'll extend that path. Oops. Uh, sometimes when you do undo and you're putting down these customizable pieces, it does strange things. So let's see, what did we just do? There it is. So you can kind of see it stuck this little ghost image out here. There's not actually anything there. And if we save the toy box and reload, nothing will be there. But I'm going to go ahead and just drop this in here anyway. And that little ghost box will be around it here for a little bit. But that's not going to hurt anything. So we'll go ahead and delete these out. 
And the last little touch I want to put on the build here before we make the horse race is I'm going to put in a little bit of a road here just to add some more visual interest and break things up just a little bit. So if we come over to the racetrack pieces, we can put down some racetrack here. And we can customize this just like the terrain pieces and those pieces under the building drawer. And uh, let's see, there we go. Mickey's Fertile Farmland is the theme. I'll set that as my theme for the terrain. And that customizes the terrain pieces to match this toy box theme we're using. And we can put in some little curved pieces so not everything is lining up super straight. We can do the same thing over here. And if I wanted to take the time, I could put in a whole racetrack in here and make this so we can actually race around this toy box. But I haven't really left myself room for that. And I don't really want to go back and uh, change it now that I'm going, because I want to move on. You'll notice here, that piece didn't line up. That's easy to fix if we just come in here and rotate this. Now it lines up with the rest of the pieces. And I think it looks a little better than leaving it the way it was. And then we can come over here and maybe extend this down to go along the back side of the farm. And it doesn't really go anywhere, but I could put another building back here, possibly. There we go. So now we got a little bit of a road coming through to add some visual interest in here. And if I were to do this again, I would probably have this road come up and run through maybe a little tunnel underneath this terrain. And I might still go ahead and do that, I'm not sure. But this gives you the idea of what you can do. So now we have kind of a nice little uh, farm taking shape here. And uh, I think I'm going to drop down one more piece because this looks a little funny to me sitting here by itself. So we'll go ahead and do that. And that kind of breaks that up a little bit. And we'll go ahead and finish off this little section here. Now that I know about how far this little thing has to go. Oops. I ended up moving it. And we'll just dead end over here next to that. And then this will go along the side of the field between the field and the orchard. And we can finish off this little path and you'll notice it's very repetitive there. And again, you can kind of change that if you spin that around a little bit. Breaks it up just a tad. There's also a longer piece down here that you can throw in that will uh, mix things up a little. So there's ways to divide this up so it's not quite uh, so repetitive. We can actually bend the path and have it go around this side of the orchard. I'm going to go ahead and dead end it right here. Okay, so there's our farm. And I think that looks pretty good. Looks like a farm. We've got a place over here for our horse. And now we're going to set up a little horse race that should be fairly easy to, uh, to do. And this is going to be similar to the path-based air race that I had done in an earlier video. So we'll come under Creativa Toys, and there's just a few pieces that we'll need. We'll need a challenge maker. And I will assume if you're going to get on your horse and want to race, you, need, or you get on your horse and ride out of the stable, you might want to race. So we'll put this right over here near the start of this track. Which reminds me that uh, looks off. And because I have a bit of a bug about that, <laughs> I have to fix that or it'll drive me crazy. Okay, so we got our challenge maker. That will start the racing challenge. 
and I'm going to need a timer. This will keep track of how long it takes us to run the race. So I'm going to drop this right here for now. And let's see, we're going to need um, a locator Two of them, in fact. And I'm going to go ahead and, let's see, where do we want this race to go? We'll probably start over here and go the, that way up to the left around the track. So player one will start here. And we want to make sure that little dot, blue dot on the end, is pointing the direction we're going to start because that's the direction the horse will be facing. There we go. Move this one over just a little bit. So we'll start the players side by side. And then the race will be indicated by this path. And this path will show exactly where we're going to race. So I'm going to add some points. And there's that little bug again. Whenever, sometimes when you drop the path, it puts you in this point mode automatically. And other times it doesn't. And when it doesn't, it kind of sticks you off in the middle of nowhere. Okay. So now, the race, I want to go this direction. We'll start along the road here. And every time I put down one of these points, it's going to put down a racing gate that you have to go through. So we'll race here, we'll go to the end of this track, and then I want to go up the hill. And we'll come around, and I might move some of these trees a little bit to make this a little bit clearer path coming through here. So it's easy to see where we're racing to. And I'm not actually going to go over there for my race, I want to come over to the edge of this. I'm down to the bottom of the hill. All right, and then we'll exit out of that. And we're going to come back over here to the starting point along the path and go into the properties. And we're going to go ahead and set this to be looped. And the default path checkpoint display is a racing gate. So when we start this race, it'll automatically look like a racing gate. There we go. And that should take care of that. And now that we kind of have the line for our path set up here, we can kind of move some of these trees out of the way a little bit and make a little bit more of a noticeable path through here. So it's obvious where you're going. Oops, can't go that far. I'm going to move this tree over. There we go. Okay. So they'll start off over there, come around on the road, and then up and over this terrain, down through this little row of trees. And then we we'll want to move this one out of the way. Uh, let's see, where do we want to put him? <laughs> Might have to clear him out. Yeah, maybe we can just throw him over here. There we go. Okay. So now we have our path. 
So now we just have to hook everything up. So we'll start over here with the challenge maker. And first thing I want to do is set up the locators. And this will be player one's starting position. And another locator. Come on, go down. Here we go. <laughs> and that'll be player two's starting position. So when we start the challenge, that's where we'll start. If you have two players, if you only have one, you'll start on that other. All right, and then we'll come under properties. And we do not want to auto start when we load this toy box because we want the player to step on that challenge maker. Might just be the player wants to come in here and farm or maybe she wants to ride around on her horse and not race. For the results, that's going to be in time. And you'll notice it changes things a little bit here. Starting location. Uh, separate locations, that's fine, because we have two separate locators. And then wherever they end up on the race, they can just uh, stay there, so that's fine. Um, we don't want to quit the toy box when the game is over, because we may want to race again or just ride around freestyle. A game countdown's kind of nice, and unfortunately we can't fill these in at all. Uh, because it doesn't let us. The text is stored on the server, and the server doesn't exist anymore since Disney Infinity took that down. And the challenge type could be vehicles, mounts, so we're going to make this um, specifically for horses, but I'm going to leave it like this. If you were to come in here, you can set it to be where you'd be on foot. Um, you're, no vehicles or mounts uh, allowed at all, so you'd start on foot and stay on foot. Uh, you could just be ground vehicles, horses, um, or whatever. And uh, this way is a little more flexible. Maybe you want to have a foot race, or maybe you want to drive a, a vehicle around. That's fine. Okay, so new time results. So at the end of the race, we want to connect to our timer over here to display the results. And speaking of the timer, we'll go ahead and set up the properties for that. So the target time doesn't really matter. Um, we can set this to be the highest that we can set it, which I believe is 999. And we want it displayed, that would be nice. And we're not counting down, we're actually going to count up, so we'll turn that off. Okay. So... We've got the setup done. So now new logic connection. Uh, when we first step on this, if you've got two players, it's going to invite the other players to play. And then started means when the race actually starts. So on the started, we actually want to come over here on started and start the timer. And new logic connection when the game is completed. We want to stop that timer. If for some reason the player decides to abort and not finish the race, um, we would want to stop it as well. So rather than set up two signals, one for each of these, we can just use game ended. We don't care how it ended. Either way, we'll come over to the timer and stop the timer. Okay. And then new logic connection. When the results are closed, we can go ahead and reset the timer. So that takes care of the timing management. Now we actually have to start the race. So uh, when the game is started, we'll come over here to the path. And we're going to go ahead and start checkpoint path tracking. And what that will do is turn on the different points around the path so they look like racing gates. 
And I'm thinking because it's doing that to look like racing gates, maybe we want to change that. So I'm going to come back over here to Path Creator. And uh, I think I'm going to delete that and start over with that. So new logic connection on invites accepted. And the reason I did that is because once the invites are accepted, you'd be standing here, you'd get the countdown, three, two, one, and then this would turn into a racing gate once it starts. And I'm thinking it might be nice on invites accepted so that when you're standing here and you're getting the countdown, you see immediately where you're supposed to go before you actually start. So that's why I did that. And when, uh, whoops, new logic connection, when the game is ended, we need to come over here and stop checkpoint track path tracking. And that will turn off the racing gates. And I think that's everything we need to do here. Let me just uh, review this real quick. Yeah, I think that's it. So it's a fairly simple race to go ahead and build. So we'll go ahead and come over here. And my understanding is, I put down a horse, but my understanding is that the girl has the uh, Maximus horse power disc, and so do I. So I'm going to put my disc down, and I can race with the same horse that she's using. So here's Rapunzel and Maximus. And we'll come over here to the challenge maker, and we'll go ahead and start the challenge. And here we are at the start of the race, and there's our starting point. So the timer is up, we're off and running. We can just kind of trot along, or I think you can hit the uh, left trigger here and go fast. And as you pass through each gate, it uh, lights the next one, so you know where you're supposed to go. Go, Rapunzel! You kind of see the scenery going by. It's kind of fun. There we go. And the finish line. And I think I got this... I'm not sure how many laps I had set up for this. <laughs> Hey, I got a feat. I didn't know I could do that. Nice. I know. I think there's a way to set the number of uh, laps that you do. I don't quite remember where I had to do that, though, so I apologize. I got to run through this three times. In a lap. She's doing pretty good. Finish line. And, uh, okay. <laughs> well, this didn't work quite the way I had hoped at all. That should have stopped. Oh, I know what I forgot. Okay. We'll go ahead and end the challenge. Yep. I knew there was something I was forgetting, but I couldn't figure out what it was. Okay, so on the path, the path has to let the challenge maker know when we're done racing. So from the path, we'll do new logic connection. Checkpoint path lap complete or race complete. On the race complete, for any player, go ahead and add, well, for all players, so all players have to finish the race. We'll come back over to the challenge maker. And we need to tell it that the game is over.
And that's what I had forgotten. And let's take a look at this because I'm curious to see where we set up the number of laps for this. There we go. Three. So you can set this to be as many laps as you want. Let's do this one lap this time. Okay, and we'll try it again. All right, this should go a little bit better this time. Okay, here we go. Start off at a sprint this time. So just one lap, and when we're finished, it should end the challenge. But this is how you learn and figure out uh, how to build these things. If it doesn't work, you just uh, take a look and figure out what you missed and try it again. It's not so bad. It just takes a little experimentation sometimes. Yay! She finished! 35 seconds to run that course. Do one lap. Very good. And there's the results. And exit. And for some reason it kicked me off the horse. <laughs> but then we can go ahead and just kind of run around, trot around here freestyle. We can run through the river. And we can head on up over this way and just kind of explore. Ride around. Let the horse get a drink while we run through and explore the area. So lots to see and do here, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope that little girl enjoys this uh, video as well. It was a lot of fun putting this together for her, and I hope she has a lot of fun with it. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel or sign up on my blog to see what we do next time. You can also find build tips and logic diagrams for the different challenges that we make, as well as other things on my blog. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And we'll see you next time.